um, I, excuse me, environment, because that ties in directly with the last question. The environment, first of all, we live in a beautiful environment here. Berks County is gorgeous, gorgeous. We need to maintain the beauty of Berks County. We need to look at manufacturing practices, however, that may in fact undermine the retention of the beauty of the region. That means we need to look at, I know one of the big issues around here is sludge. We need to look at that and how we, how we um, use um, the wastewater, right? And how we, um, and, and whether or not we are in compliance with EPA standards or better. And I know we're not currently, but we need to be really cognizant of it and we need to really make sure that our policy leaders, and when I win I become a policy leader, that we're held accountable. We need, and I'm, I'm willing to say, I will be held accountable and I will stand up for you around that. I don't want my children drinking dirty water, eating vegetables that um, perhaps come from farms that are not um, sanitary because of the ways in which they are using topsoil and the like. That's very pragmatic policy issue. That's a very pragmatic policy issue. Um, I really think we need to address those kinds of concerns. When it comes to, that's just an example, we don't have a lot of time, but I, that's one example. When it comes to education, education is directly tied to jobs. I work with the, the statewide policy team for Jobs for the Future and the Gates Foundation around community colleges. I understand the linkage between education, good education and good jobs. I'll continue that in a second. I'll make this a narrative. <laughs> During the public discourse leading up to the passage of the health care bill, it was frustrating to watch so many of our Democratic representatives not speak out enough. They did not reach out to educate their constituents on the truth about health care reform. They did nothing to counter the Republican lies. Will you promise to not only represent us, but to also educate us on the issues? In other words, will you be a leader? The answer is yes. I am a leader. I will continue to be a leader. I believe that leaders are made, not necessarily born. I do believe that I have the qualities of leadership um, that have been expressed um, in many, many uh, situations and in very positive ways. This, this kind of dialogue, good leadership does not happen in a vacuum. It requires a dialogue. It requires that I hear from my constituents and that I listen. It also requires that my constituents listen to my positions and that I communicate my positions. One of the challenges we have today is that our legislator is not communicating. I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I have, I've served as chief counsel of two organizations, and I'm not trying to be positive, um, excuse me, negative when I say, I am trying to be positive about myself, but I'm not trying to bash my opponent. But the fact of the matter is that I have been a leader for much of my professional life, and I know that good leadership requires good communication. And if you are not communicating well, then you shouldn't be in that position. That is one of the absolutely essential components of good, strong leadership. I am a communicator, but I'm also a listener. 